Hello, welcome, 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 gorgeous beings of light. We are pure source. This is Elmara coming to you again from the spectacular Mother Gulliga, or Gulliga Mother, as she's known to the Aboriginal people on the south coast of New South Wales and Australia. I would probably have to say that this is my spiritual home. I came to this area after a set of miracles. Um, about four or five years ago, and although I don't live here now, I'm always drawn back here because it fills my heart with such incredible love and sustenance. So, so before I leave again tomorrow, I wanted to maybe share with you the miracle of how I got to be here. So, um, so I remember that it had been freezing. It was 2013. Um, it had been freezing that year in um, Melbourne. It had been like three degrees, you know, in February. And um, I was um, just like, I had, I was doing a 19 week online program and I just wanted to go somewhere and thaw out. By May, I'd been stuck inside. And so I was kind of asking for where to go and I had Jack by this stage I had my little dog Jack so and prior to all this happening I'd been having these visions I would I'd have these visions or dreams of this place that had rolling green plains and beautiful pristine air and um and I would wake up to a rooster crowing in the morning and then I'd wake up in cold bloody Melbourne and go what's going on God you know and that had been happening for about six months prior to this 2013 and um, I'm not completely sure how it came about but I think a guy who had been a client of mine in Melbourne obviously lived here in this tiny little community that only had 10 houses in it and he had sent me a um he was on Facebook and he'd sent me a invitation to attend his yoga retreat that he was holding in um in the Buddhist um retreat or the Buddhist temple that's just on the other side of the mountain here I didn't kind of think of it, anything much of it, except that I thought, oh, Tilbur, I'd heard lots of people say how beautiful it was here. So I Googled it, eventually found this farm house, Mountain View Farm, that um, accepted um, animals as a holiday. So I wrote to the people through their website and just asked if uh, there was any vacancies in, like, at the end of May when I finished this program. Um, the gentleman wrote back saying, um, the gentleman wrote back saying, I'm sorry, I've got nothing till July. And, um, and I was really pushed by spirit to write back, um, and ask him, did he know anywhere else that was available in the area that accepted animals? And, um... And, but the interesting thing was I used to have, you know, like, you know, Namaste, Infinite Blessings, Elmara on the bottom of the, on the, of the email and, um, and, you know, my website address and that. And, and always I would, uh, I used to comically say I would remove all of that so the weirdos didn't think that I was weird. Um, and this particular time they said to me, don't remove it. I said, what? And they went, no, leave it there. And no, leave it there. And um, I went, you're kidding me, you're right? No, no, leave it there. Okay, I'll leave it there. So I leave it there. And um, and I and then I still don't get anything back for that. Because Spirit had said that, I thought, oh, I thought that's interesting. I didn't hear anything back for about four or five days. And, uh, and so I, and I looked at a couple of other places that didn't feel right in Tilba. So I just let it go. And then on the Friday morning, I got a phone call from the guy who said, oh, look, I'm sorry, um, I can have the place ready for you by, I think it was June the 20th or something. And um, I said, oh, fabulous. Yeah, that'll do me. I'll take that. And I booked in for a week to come with Jack. And um, we set out on this journey, 600 odd, 660 kilometres, 669 kilometres away it was. And um, on this date, on the 20th of June or whatever, we stayed over um, somewhere on the way to Lakes Entrance about halfway up. And I don't know, it should really have only taken me four hours. I left Lakes Entrance at um, at 11 o'clock in the morning 
Um, Ben, I should have really been here by about three or four, but as it turned out, I did not get here until 5.30 and because it was winter time, it was dark by then. And um, well, prior to that happening, after he... After he, he had rang me up and I started to talk to him, I asked him if I could book the one-bedroom cottage, but he said that he was um, renovating that and painting it because his long-term tenant had just to, just left, but he would give me the two-bedroom for the same price. And I remember hearing, do, 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 and I went, oh, I wonder, I wonder. Um, and then um, I also, we had chatted a little bit about spiritual stuff as well. And I just kind of, I sort of knew this was, oh my God, this is my new home. Anyway, for, it took took me from 11 a.m. in the morning to 5.30, so that was six and a half hours to do a four-hour drive. Don't know how that happened. Maybe I stopped and walked Jack, but I'm sure I didn't stop for two and a half hours. And I pull in here and I was so pooped from two days of driving. It was the first time. I've done, I do that trip in a day now, but it was the first time I'd done a long trip like that in a long time. And I pulled in and at three Three o'clock in the morning, I was woken up to. I woke up to a rooster crowing, and then by about eight o'clock in the morning, I woke up and just went outside and was met with the most exquisite rolling green plains, which you can see in the video, and um, Mother Gulliga and Mist on the Mountain, and it was just spectacular. And um, I'd said to myself, "Now, don't talk to him about moving here permanently. Don't, don't do anything crazy till Thursday. Give it four days." And um, but. By the end of the first day, he and I were talking about me moving here and living here permanently. There was there's ten houses in this tiny, tiny little town, ten houses, and I managed to find one to come a little tiny miners' cottage, which in the picture that's at the front, hopefully, if I work out how to do it properly, the little house that's on the right hand corner of the photo as you look at it with a green roof. That's where I lived for two and a half years. It was just spectacular until they sold that farm. But what was really interesting that he had said to me during the time we got to know each other before I moved back here to live permanently because I stayed for two weeks then. He said to me that his angel said to him, you've got to answer that, you've got to answer that ad and get that girl down here. She'll show you how to work with the, that lady down here and she'll show you how to work with the land spiritually. You have to answer that ad and get that lady down here to show you the answer. And he go, what ad, what ad? Because he had just basically dismissed me. But I had sent an email, second email back asking him, did he, could he recommend a place and that's where he found me and answered it and that's where he found all my you know all my stuff on the bottom of my my signature on the bottom of my email that said that I was a spiritual teacher and healer and la di da da all the other stuff we put in there a soul awakener and spiritual entrepreneur and all those wonderful things so so that's the story of this gorgeous land that you can see in these photos if you ever get an opportunity to come here please do um, the mother Gulliga or Gulliga mother as she's known to our Aboriginal people is a sacred mountain here and um and all sorts of lovely stuff happened it's the one of our aboriginal women's most sacred sites in australia if you're looking for somewhere gorgeous to stay it's now run by a beautiful single mum and her two children um, and you can just look up mountainviewfarm.com.au and you can stay at the foothills of this mountain and look out over this gorgeous energy. Um, if you're looking for Wi-Fi and TV and all that, don't come here because you don't get any of that. The phone doesn't work. You have to go and hang out on the side of the road. But if you're looking for peace and quiet and a profoundly spiritual place, you will find that here. You'll find that here for sure. And... Um, yeah, so that's the miracle of how I came to be in this beautiful land. And unfortunately, just due to circumstances, I can't live here now. But I am living in lots of wonderful places. So um, I recommend, and not only that, you can buy the most delicious homemade scones, homemade jam and Tilba cream scones at the Tilba Tilba Teapot, which is opposite the Tilba Pub in central Tilba, which is the next little town up. That's also only got about 200 residents in it. But the Tilba Cheese Factory, which is just down the road from it, has the most delicious homemade cheeses and ice creams. And you get Tilba milk that is just like out of this world. And there's just so much to see if you're not into food like I am. There's lots of beautiful oceans and lakes and, and lagoons. And if you're into fishing, you can do that. But I reckon you should try and get here. It's a it's a about a five hour drive from Melbourne, about a three hour drive from Canberra, and about a they say it's only seven hours from Melbourne, but the truth is it's about a ten hour drive. But really, it is truly spectacular and worth your time to come and have a look at it. I wanted to share it with you because I'm leaving tomorrow and I'll be heartbroken for just a little bit. But um, I'm sure I'll have some other fantastic places around Australia to share with you. So. 
My deepest love and richest blessings to you all. Um, but I just wanted to share with you how sometimes when you're guided to go somewhere, the, the clues get a little bit skewed. But if you just keep following them and putting one foot in front of the other, you end up where you're meant to be. And this is certainly where I was meant to be. And it's certainly my spiritual home and it will be for the rest of my life. So, alrighty, gorgeous beings of light, I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Um, I hope you have a fantastic week and I look forward to sharing with you some other miracle or some other great spiritual truth from somewhere in this gorgeous, gorgeous land called Australia or even eventually maybe in the world. Alrighty, lots of love. God bless. Take care and bye for now.